big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding, most dedicated wife oh. you could have. She in the building, man. The official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my dad walk on. And guess what, man? Guess what? What? Man, we got a guy in here today who don't need an introduction, really, because he been busy. Mm. You done seen him if you be watching, man. If you love wrestling. If you really tapped in, though, you got to be tapped in. Most of y'all don't really love wrestling. Most time it's the women and the children that love wrestling the most. You niggas ain't tapping in like y'all need to be, man. But anyway, boy, that guy <laughs> Tempo is in the building. What's going on? What's up, man? What's up? Thank you for having me. Man, listen, man. You one of the dopest dudes, man. But I know how we do it, man. You know, just uh, you know, watching your movement's been a great thing, man. We want to understand, like, who you are, how you got into wrestling. We want to understand what what gave you the audacity to be jumping up, getting hit in the canvases, <laughs> all that good stuff. We want to get into it, man. So but let's, before you get into that, take us back to where you're from, how you grew up, family, the whole works. Let's go. No, no. All right. So I'm from a small town in West Texas called Loveland, Texas. Okay. Come from a come from a big family. Uh, there's eight of us. Got four sisters, three brothers. And coming up, my older siblings was very much into wrestling. So when I was a, I remember when I was a baby, I don't remember a lot of things, but I do remember wrestling being on the TV. And ever since then, I was hooked. So you're the middle child? No, nah, I'm the second to the youngest. Second so, to the youngest. Yeah. Oh, so you can, you're like a baby boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was for 14 years. Then my little sister came out of nowhere. How did you feel about that? You know, I was a little surprised at first, but uh, <laughs> I love her. It, so it's, it's all good. It all worked out great. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. Well, you know, we had to get you on the show, man. You know, I didn't want to say it, you know, but he is family, so we want to get that out there. So keep that understood when you see a nigga, he rolling with boss talk. But at <laughs> any rate, man, just tell me a little bit about like the first time you knew that that this was something. Well, you you're a preacher's kid. Yeah. Um, how was that growing up? Uh, it was it was cool. He by the time he got to us, he was really dove in it hard. When you know when you first get into preaching, that's what a mm-hmm. a lot of people do. He got into hard. So the first three siblings was around it way more. By the time it got to us, we had to go to church on Sunday and Wednesday. But that was pretty much it. But it wasn't like a lot of people think. A lot of people think we was having to read the Bible every single day and. You know, he was just He too was training much, uh, y'all to take over his footsteps of being preachers. He wasn't... Right. They And they think that he went in hard, everything. But it's... I mean, we get that stereotype because it is what it is. We mm-hmm. preachers' kids. But we didn't really... It wasn't really like that in the house. You know, we had a lot of freedom. You know, I mean, it wasn't disrespectful or nothing like that. But at the same time, we could still go out and do stuff and, and just, be, just don't get in trouble. Don't do nothing crazy. But other than that, it was... Pretty normal. What you feel about the saying where people always say preachers' kids are always the worst? I don't. I like I said. I think it's just a stereotype. Uh, I, but I get it. it. I think it just depends on how how hardcore it was pushed on you okay. because you're going to rebel at depends. some point. Right. Right? Everybody's going to rebel and try to fight against what they were told was always right because they got to go out there and find out for themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't get burned till you touch the fire yourself. But we, like I said, it wasn't that controlled in the house so we always have freedom so i don't i don't think we too bad i mean ain't none of us really out there crazy in jail so i think he did a good job wait a minute wait a minute out there crazy in jail jail ain't that bad <laughs> <laughs> out there crazy in jail you ain't gotta be crazy go to jail you could have been framed that's true that's true <laughs> but i meant the crazy part if you're crazy then you went to jail not the frame part if you frame you know no, shout out to all the innocent people in jail right now <laughs> Let's shout them get out a lawyer. for show. Get a lawyer. We Don't got, got somebody coming, coming up? Yeah, yeah, we, get we, a lawyer we, we, for that. Yeah, yeah, listen to this interview. Get ready. <laughs> I know you said that um, where wrestling is concerned, you know, your older brothers used to watch wrestling, and that's how you got into it. It was actually my older sister, actually, really. Really? Yeah, she was in joy. It was big really? part of it. Yeah, she loved wrestling, and she would always be watching it. Did she she would watch me and watching it. No, nah, she didn't do that. She wasn't. Hey, you know how, it, as a kid, when you watch, you'd be like, I can do that. Come on, let's go outside and play. Oh, yeah. So we had a lot of, uh, well, me and my brothers, we would always do it. Our cousins, we had a big family. So every mm-hmm. time we would be practicing wrestling moves, and I got to be an uncle at a very early age. Mm-hmm. So I had a lot of nieces and nephews to practice on, you know, drop the elbow every once in a while, get in trouble. But so you got bad. beat up a lot? Yeah, I mean, just in the family, it, just, it was rough, and you grow up around a lot of cousins and your boys, right. and you're going to fight sometimes, you're going to do stuff, you know. But it, I wouldn't say, like, beat up, but, you know, roughed up a little roughed bit. Roughed up. Yeah. Okay. So um, when did you decide that this is what you wanted to do full time? 
so I always knew I wanted to do it, but I think at 14, I really knew, like, all right, I got to, like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. So I started looking into schools, looking in where I should go, the top wrestling schools to get trained at. Uh, I started you working in the summers. Schools? Well, yeah, that's it. you got to go to a certain school or, you know, academy to go and get that. trained. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. They think you just kind of end up there. But mm-hmm. it's like anything else. It's kind of like a trade or a craft. You got to go somewhere to learn it. You know what I mean? Then you got to get out there and jump in the market of it. I want to know, because growing up, I used to love watch wrestling, right? And as a child watching wrestling, you're thinking that everything is real. No, no, like, no, no, all no, of no, this no, is no, real. No, 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 I don't want to talk about that just yet. Why not? I'm just messing with you. That's what you always do to me. I'll just okay. give it back to you. Yeah. Oh, well, well. <laughs> no. Going back and forth. He trying to set up a little wrestling interview right here. You going on. I'm, I'll mediate it right now. You I'm just understand. kidding, man. But I always thought that everything was real. But as, you know, I got older and people were like, no, nah, that's not real. They, they be acting. How much of it is real? How much of it is acting? Like, Well, it falls under the umbrella of entertainment, you know, for a reason. But uh, it is definitely a, it's, I mean, I'm feeling everything when I'm in there. You know, you get roughed up. You got to build the calluses to it. So that's why you go and get trained. But it's it's very hard on the body. And I think people, I don't know when they say fake, I don't know exactly what they mean. And it's, like that's acting, I say, you like know, like how you have like stunt doubles and all of that in movies. No, and yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. no I'm doing everything. You see me get picked up and slam and get thrown so off the top really rope. So you really get thrown me. off the top rope. Bless like, me. Yeah. Bam. We, and we got to understand, we live in front of people. So we don't, I don't got a time to, hey, stunt double come in where, yeah. you know, you got a crowd right. of people out there watching you. So it's, it's so much people get confused because it's so, they don't know, right? So when you don't know, you just start to go off what you hear, what they heard, what your uncle told you, what your brother told you, what their friend said, they mm-hmm. saw this wrestler do. But no, I mean, if you ever go to a show, you will kind of see it. Like you said, tonight, y'all going out. But eventually, I'll be back in Dallas, and y'all going to come to a show, and you Because the stage is oh, no, it's Let me padded, right? Yeah. It's really padded. Duh. I'd be thinking about somebody holding somebody from up here and throwing them down. I'm like, how do you not but, get like seriously hurt? You talking about the ring? Yeah, the ring. No, no, no. It's I mean, it's a little padded in there, but it's pretty much just plywood and metal and a little pad. How yeah. Do somebody doesn't get like I, really hurt. I, I, I don't know, man. I, I I really I watched the 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 Rio Rio <laughs> stomp down Dusty Rhodes. Uh, okay. The, yeah, I'm Son of a, the plumber. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm a uh, 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 junkyard dog. Uh, I remember okay. him. Hold on, man. I Ernie remember the Hulk. Big Cat Ernie Ladd. I remember, Big Ernie? you know, uh, 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 the grappler. The, 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 the French Von Eric name that'll put okay. that head I in the claws. Him. See, I'm a, the real, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, a yeah. real stomp down wrestling fan, to be honest <laughs> with you. Uh, uh, Buddy Landell, yeah. Man, you throwing out some uh, Michael Hayes right? and Terry Garden. Free I'm a real, talking about the yeah, Freebirds. Yeah, I'm a yeah, real I'm stump down wrestling. See, y'all don't really know Iceman. Y'all don't know nothing. Look, look, man, I really watch wrestling. Right. Go okay. Ahead, tell them. I really do this. Like, I <laughs> would have wrestled a nigga and put him in the. I done Jake the Snake the nigga and put him down. You DDT'd know what I'm saying? Him? I DDT'd a few niggas. Did in you my have the life. snake with you? What you I'm did like, yeah, I'm, I, that's what I'm trying no, to say. No, you did not. I really know about about. <laughs> Didn't not. I just to show you I really know about wrestling? He was throwing out some legends. I just, out there. You don't really understand. And I could keep going, to be honest with you. Okay, go I really, on. out of the Freebirds, I was more of a Terry Guard. I like the big okay. nigga that really pressure, you see. I, this I come out here you. Like I, I do this right here. I really uh, love wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't like it when uh, you know certain things happen because I they cut it off and you have to wait a whole week when you're in the country. We didn't have a three channels. Oh, okay. So, okay. you know, it was pretty bad, but... I just enjoyed it. So what is new in wrestling now that's different from back then? Oh, man, it's it's just a whole new world because the world has evolved so much. But you got different styles. You got different types. Now uh, there's, you know, you can go to, like, a lot of people go to Japan. But all this stuff, when you didn't have the Internet, you have to kind of see it through videotapes and and you have to either hear about it or read about it, but now everybody can see the whole thing. So it's just a lot more of a faster pace because it's been done so much, and now you're on the entertainment channel, and you got to compete with other entertainment. So it goes up, it goes down the levels. You're going to see more athleticism, uh, more. No, I don't think so. I, I th- nigga, put the big is thump on you, nigga. To see the more athleticism. Thump. Yeah, I think it's possible because the they they were leg like people. by Ted DiBiase, man. Well, I ain't, what, what, what are you trying I'm to say? I'm just saying these was the tactics they was using. I can't see how it would be more physical now than it was back then. I think it was may have been more may, gr- gr- it, it gr- may be more, more strategic back now. Then. Well, I think back then too the schedule was was completely different, and uh, they were doing it a lot more. But they'll go to certain territories. Okay. Nowadays, it's uh, once you get a contract, you're doing it a lot of days. Uh, the top guys are the contracts. You probably working, you know. 
320 days out the year, and that's including Ooh. traveling and, and wrestling, and that's when you get to that top level. So it's definitely hard on the body, but way more harder on the mental because now you're doing it for a global audience rather than just your territorial audience. How long does it take to get to that level? It's different for everybody. Um, it's it's entertainment, so this is the thing. You can be real good. You know, I was telling somebody if in football, if you run a, a, the 40 time, you get a good 40 time, you got you catching out there in the combine, you do good, you're doing good, you're going to go to an NFL team or they're going to look at you. Here you could be the best wrestler inside the ropes, but then if you ain't got the talking part down or the entertainment part down, so it's entertainment. So, so you have just to more be an all-rounded individual. Yeah. and then it's just if you fit the criteria for what they're looking for at the time too. So, so you talked about going to school. So when you went to school for it, they don't teach you all of the other parts, like the talking part and everything else to get you groomed to well, go? Yes, yeah, some do, some don't. You mainly are there to learn the fundamentals and learn the language. It's like I can go wrestle somebody in Japan and we don't speak the same language, but there's certain things that we would do in there to where we would know because wrestling is okay. a universal language. Okay. So you go to you, so you understand what that is and mm -hmm. how to, you know, we call it bumping, but how to fall properly, how to pick somebody up because the whole deal is you're working together in there you're working together to tell the best story because we just tell stories with our body we're no different than rappers or actors so stories you tell with your body it's storytelling you know what i mean if there's a big guy versus a small guy you got to tell that story the david and goliath story if there's somebody that's a good wrestler versus somebody that's a brawler you got to tell that story i just so never there's thought about it stories. as a story before. no I, I definitely get it i understand the concept because you're entertaining so right. you want to make sure you capture it uh, you really want to make sure you captivate the audience that right. you're you're in front of so i i definitely understand understand how that could be a thing yeah, yeah and you yeah. want to make it to where it, it's more if you know like i said if you got a five six guy that's 180 pounds versus a six three guy that's 250 pounds of muscle you're going to have to tell that story different than 250 you know 250 pound guys in there so if it's two big guys it's going to be a different fight than a big guy and a small guy right you know? that's true how many or if there's <coughs> an underdog compared to the big guy you yeah know? you got to have your underdogs it's right. all about stories it's all about storytelling it's like every movie you kind of know how it's going to end right but you want to see how the character evolves and how he gets to the destination of the end of the story how many years have you been doing it I've been doing it for, in June, it'll be nine years. Wow. And yeah. how far, okay. So what are the levels of doing it? Because when you think about wrestling, everybody just watch WWE, but I know there's other um, promotions out there right. that you have to go through before you get to that. Or can you just leave straight from um, school and go to that? Or do you, or can you not go to school and get in? Well, see, every everybody has a unique way of getting in the business. There are some people in the business who were never trained, never went to a wrestling school, but they okay. got to go to WWE and then get under their performance center, under their umbrella. Okay. It's, uh, nowadays, they're getting it from all angles. So they will go in. They even just did a, a college thing. I don't want to talk, you know, promote them too much, but they're getting college athletes who are not going to uh, go further along go and, and okay. go pro. So they'll say, well, hey, you have a good look. You know, we probably can market you this way come and try this wrestling thing out so it's it's a bunch of different ways how to get into it it's not just one way how to get into it. it's not one size fits all it's not you go here it's entertainment but you know because you could be like a rapper a rapper can mm -hmm. come out one week and then he can go viral and then boom he's on top you got right. some rappers that have been in the game for 20 years they never had the radio play or anything like that not that they're not good enough it's just the opportunity didn't you know come accordingly it's all about networking, too, is who you know. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, where do you see stuff going after this? Or what's your next stage you go to after WWE? Is there another stage after that? Um, or is this the final, like, it before retirement? Uh, it just it depends on where you can get a contract. There's multiple promotions out there right now. You have WWE, you have AEW, you have Impact, you have Ring of Honor. What's the biggest? Uh, WWE, by far. Yeah, okay, WWE so is that's, McDonald's that's what, in, the, in the game. Right, yeah. that's why I was like, after WWE, that's when I would but, think that you would retire. Well, no, you don't necessarily retire because... You know, it's kind of like the NFL. Not for long, you're in there for four seasons and you're out. Mm -hmm. You the the as your brand, you want to get to WWE and maximize your audience, right? right? The people that see you. But let's say you get to WWE for four years and now you're 35 when you're out. You can still wrestle, so mm -hmm. you can go maybe to the second biggest promotion, or you can make your own schedule and do appearances, do autograph signings. It's it's very an independent business once you once you're not under contract. Or if you're like The Rock, he branch off into movies. Right after you, you, that. Right, there's a lot of people that's doing that right now too, uh, branching off into acting and, and acting. Yeah, doing some background work and stuff like that. Let me ask you something. Um, so um, the t-shirts and stuff that I see a lot of them promoting and stuff. Do you have a brand that 
um, that you're you're pushing as far as your t-shirts, any apparel? Uh, are you asking me uh, personally? You, yeah. Per- no, I don't. We um, need to get that done. Yeah, well, for sure, because I'm definitely looking for it. So. Yeah, well, you're talking to the right person today. We need to start figuring that out because that way when you go out, you'll have people represent, you know, yeah, more the brand money. more. Because you're a brand. Because to do something for nine years, you have a following. And that following will invest in your brand, of course. Facts, yeah. yeah so I, I like that. I, I just was thinking about that. But, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, who and did it, Joy like, though? Uh, well, answer the question. Go ahead and say what you No, think. I was going to say, it's, uh, it's, it, it's different because when you're an independent, you got to find – at the time you're looking for somebody who do your shirts, but maybe this person do them this way. Maybe you need them by this. So if you could find uh, a good source to do it, then that's better. But you say yeah. who did Joy like? Yeah. Who she, she like? She likes Sting, man. She loves Sting. Sting I remember that. Guy. I yeah. remember. Why do I remember that? I shouldn't remember that. Yeah. Because <laughs> Sting ain't all that. Not, you, no, probably, no. you probably remember her yelling. Yeah, 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 yeah that's probably no, what But I'm going to be honest with you, man. Ain't nobody dish. R.I.P. the junkyard dog. Nobody else did <laughs> yeah, it no, like man. the dog. No, J, man. The J.Y.D. He did some great things in the uh, Louisiana territory yeah, back yeah. in the day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He was the, the champ back there. He used yeah, to yeah. fill up arenas out there, man. Yeah. So, no, yeah. I like The Undertaker. Well, and he just went into the Hall of Fame last mm-hmm. night. Also, mm-hmm. along with Booker T. Wife, Miss Charmel. Shout out to uh, Queen Charmel and Booker See. T. They just got in the Hall of Fame. Man, so what are you expecting tonight out of uh, out of just entertaining? What do you got? What are you looking to accomplish out of? Oh this? man, so right now what's happening is let me kind of just put it in context. It's WrestleMania. So when WrestleMania goes to any town, WrestleMania takes over. But all the wrestling, all the other promotions are going to come here because you have fans from all over the world that's already here. So what we're doing is this is a new Texas pro wrestling, and I was actually. One of the founders of this promotion as well. So we're doing a show at 12 o'clock midnight, uh, right after WrestleMania. It's like the after party because all these fans are here for the weekend right. and they're, they're looking to, to get all wrestled out. So wow. there's going to be mul- there's just been multiple shows going on. Some that's been going on since like 10 a.m. this morning, like down there. So it's it, that's what it is. We're, this is probably going to be the most wrestling crowd you're going to be in front of, and we just want to, you know, put our flag in the ground and show them what New Texas is about. How many times do they ever come to Texas? Who? Or Dallas? WrestleMania. WrestleMania. They probably came. Uh, they they were here, I think, about three or four years ago again too. Okay. And with COVID, it was. I don't know if they were expected to be here as much, but they did redid it again because they're standing in the south more than they're going up north. Right? Oh, really? Yeah, because a lot of places. I mean, you know, like California and stuff mm-hmm. is barely opening up. Right. Really. Yeah. So they did a lot of contract Makes stuff sense. and moving down here. But Makes I. Sense. But now they're traveling out. I think. I don't. I don't know their schedule. Probably in the next couple of years they'll be back up there. Man, you know, you just you just uh, you delight, man. You know, I'm very proud of you to be affiliated with you, for you to come and uh, bless Boss Talk 101 and sit in front of this August panel. You know what I'm saying? We basically... We basically a nice put word. a lot of people in that in that seat, uh, you know, and we just love to uh, interview guys like you, people who've been grinding, you know, who who stay consistently doing something, you know, uh, you know, and being being true to it. Most people right. don't stick with nothing, you know yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not easy to stick to something and know that this is what you're going to do. And, and and how did you know that wrestling was the thing that you really loved? Man, it's just, you can't explain it. It's just that feeling that you get and uh, you don't want to be without it. You want to stay constantly into it. And I just knew, man, I, I went to a, a junior college and out there where my hometown was. And I was just like, man, this is ain't this ain't it. You know, mm-hmm. I'd rather i rather do something I'm a love than, you know, come and sit down and act like until I know what I want to do. So I took that, that you know, that financial aid money and I, I put it towards wrestling. So I did mm-hmm. still go to school with it, just not the school that, I, you know. Are you a so, mama's boy or a daddy's boy? Man, I would probably say I'm a mama's boy. Okay. <laughs> baby boy. I mean, what you expect? Well, you just never know because at the end baby of Baby boys? Well, it don't matter. Hell, either. my my, you know, so I've seen different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but our boy stuck over there with you. But <laughs> hell, yeah, that don't mean everybody doing it like you doing it. She got our boy spoiled. That's why she said it, baby boy, baby. Whatever. Let <laughs> nigga off that titty for a minute. Let's get some work done. You know what I'm saying? But no. Um, I want to know. So if um, they're aspiring um, wrestlers watching right now, right? right? Some kids who growing up are like, man, that's what I want to do. And um, what city, because you know, like for acting, people are always like, well, I go to California or New York if I want to be an actor. Right. Um, where exactly would you advise a person to be if they wanted to wrestle? Like, there's a, there's a good number of schools uh, right now that's also affiliated with some top promotions, uh, but you got uh, down in Houston, Booker T School. Okay. That's a good one. You got um, 
uh, there's a couple of schools in San Antonio. There's so much schools that, that are, it's not really one place. I would just say, do your research and understand who they've trained and go look at it and then go spend some time and some money and go there for a couple of days and go look at it. And if you think it's legit, but you should know it's legit if you do your research. Do these schools help you to get exposure after your graduation? Uh, some, but once you're kind of done, you know, it's, it's up to you. It's an independent world, independent contractor. So you got to get out there and you got to grind. You know, ain't nobody going to hold your hand to the promised land. You got to get out there and do it. What, what titles have you ever held? <laughs> I mean, uh, multiple. <laughs> I've held the television championship at, uh, at Reality of Wrestling. I held the uh, Texas Wrestling Entertainment Championship. I've had the Inspire Pro Champion, who actually has a show before us tonight. And then I just got done holding the WCWF Championship out in California. Which one have you held for the longest? Ooh, probably the uh, the Inspire Pro Championship. How long have you held that one? That was a good year. A good year. Yeah, a good year. And it knocked you off your reign after that. And it, and it knocked me off. Yeah, it's a. Uh, and it's weird too, because some shows happen once a month. There's some mm -hmm. happen twice, uh, twice a month. It just depends on the show. But most shows are once a month, so. Oh, okay. In that frame, yeah. If you oh, could okay. go back and uh, ask yourself, or, or, what are one of the biggest mistakes that you made? Uh, it, you could see that in wrestling, you like, dang, I shouldn't have did this, but I done it, and you learn from it, of course. Right. It was something that you. It may have you were like, dang, kind of rethought about it. I would probably say it was when you're around people. Uh, who are of uh, at a, at a certain at a high level? Never be a, never be discouraged to ask him a question. Never be discouraged to network. Get emails. Get phone numbers. Worst they can say is no. Mm -hmm. But then if they say yeah, you got access to some people that's True. willing to help you out. Or, you know things like that. So I always say just make sure you networking yeah. because that's a that's a big deal. That's what you said. It's about who you know, and that's mm -hmm. huge. Well, see the thing, yeah. But I always we call it the same thing. It's about how you stand on the stage that God provide to you. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? There, in walks of life, you always are presented with different situations, and you have to prepare yourself to be able to understand when you always, it's a stage. So when I'm standing on a certain stage with certain individuals, what am I going to do to capitalize off of that moment? Exactly. That's what you're saying. Right, right. When that's you, what yeah. we try to do because you never know who you're going to be in the front of, and you got to be prepared for that. And right. a lot of times... Prayer is what help you to understand who your self-awareness and prayer helps you to be stronger when those different situations are presented to you. Facts. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> because you got to know inside of you that you belong in the place that you are. Yeah. A lot of time it's because of insecurities yeah. that make you feel somewhat not able to go up and ask that person for a number or not able to go up and ask that person for maybe a, a email or, or just interacting with that person because you're looking at yourself as if you don't belong. Right, and that's a big so. deal. You just can't be insecure. You gotta, and like you said, if you don't feel like you' supposed to be there, then ain't nobody else gonna feel that feeling for you. You know. Yeah. So, do you have a signature move? Yes, I do. do. It what is, is it? called paying dividends. What so is it? So you paying dividends. You gotta look it up because it's hard to explain. I'm sitting down in a chair, but there's videos out there of it. I'll show you some stuff, and then next time. You, know you ain't gonna I mean? show me to show you, man. You ain't for the show either. You said you're gonna go to a show. I got you, man. I'll, I'll show you. I don't you. wanna show know you. how to do it. I don't want it done on me. You can hey, do it on him. Dividends. Do oh, it on at? Trey, you, my son. Trey, he, come, in, yeah. come in for a second, the, real quick, Trey. Let me do man, something no. for you. Take the take a head off. Oh, take, I was joking. You for real? No, no, yeah, just kind of show me. Yeah, put that nigga on the floor. Put that nigga down in the lock and bop that nigga to the floor and push his head down. What'd he do? Why, you in trouble or something? What'd he do? I don't want to see it, nigga. I want to see action I'm about that action you, know? you don't want me to mess up this beautiful no, place no, man. No, no, no. we need to get man. remodeled in a, in a week or so anyway so hell let's start now you know what I'm saying <laughs> I'll show you on the video. That's my cousin. I can't do my cousin like that. It hurt like that, money. What are you doing to these people? You know, you got to do whatever you got to do to get that one, two, three, man. So, uh, how you, hard is it you, to find a signature move, though? Because uh, it's got so many be hard. people in there. That yeah, you how do you not replicate somebody else's move? That's the that's the hard part. And that's the the biggest problem today. Is a lot of it, it's so much out there that you can kind of copycat and a lot of stuff. Right. So. And you just don't want to do a lot of moves that people are already doing on TV. Because, right. But I could have a move all day, right? It's mine. But the person gets the TV and he do it. I can never meet him. It's wrestling. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's kind of like when a comedian tells the same joke, but they don't know each other. It's just in the same realm. Wait a minute. I used to see 
Ted DB, I see he loaded the glove up back in the days. Oh, yeah, I and got he, you. Yeah, he'd stick that pin. I don't know what he put in there. It was that metal. But, boy, when he put that thing, that metal in there, and boy, and he hit you, boy, them niggas would fall out. Boy, I loved it. <laughs> be, be mad. No, he doing it. You know, he doing it. The referee not seeing it. Boy, I be laughing so hard. <laughs> That's some of the best stuff, and that's another part of the story. You know, the the ref is in there, and and you know, the more legit the ref is, the better the story is, right? Yeah. yeah. How, how many I'll times say have you crooked been, refs? Have you, yeah, heck you, yeah. I mean, you can, but if you have a neutral ref, is you know, it's better. But something ain't cricket. Something's just if you got a distraction going on, if you don't see it, you know, you play basketball. Mm-hmm. There's sometimes they, they didn't see that. They didn't see that double dribble every once in a while. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. They didn't see that that post All every once in a while. Yeah, they can't see everything. Have you have you ever had an intimidating moment like? Like something that intimidates you when you feel the wrestle somebody, or you feel like, damn, it's gonna be. Have you ever, have you ever got serious? Because that's a lot, man. It's a uh, it like can serious, be. serious. Like when person see you, they like, I don't like that dude. It can be. I mean, but if you're professional and you put yourself in that that environment, that energy, if you're professional, then you shouldn't have any problems. But I, I don't know if you do something to somebody, or you say something, you, then maybe you're gonna have to get in there and have a problem. Just be prepared. <laughs> you know what's, what's hard for me to see? Like, knowing you, because when you see wrestlers, they have to know how to trash talk. Right. I don't see you trash talking. There, there's ways to trash talk, though. You don't got to trash talk in a in such a demeanor. You could be uh, side talking about it. You can give backhanded compliments. There's a there's a lot of different ways that you could do it. But I've trash talked in my day. I what mean, is your <laughs> What is your most memorable moment of trash talking? And what did you say? Mm, my most memorable moment of trash talking. I what I do is when the crowd be you know if, if I'm not feeling a certain place you know I'm the bad guy, and I'll have the I'll have the good guy down and they be chanting his name but then I shut it down then I'll start chanting his name. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. And they look at you and they get and they, but they get behind it too though. <laughs> but I'll be on, man. I'll be on them, boy. I'll be. I'll just be out there laughing at them, pointing to them. You know, I'll be like, oh, this, this you? This you? This is what you was cheering for? You know what I mean? So stuff like that. And once you see it in your environment, it makes it all that much better. What's the, uh, have you ever, uh, what's the craziest thing a fan ever done while you was out there doing your thing? Like to me or like To you, just, to you. Nah, I mean, I haven't had too much crazy, like crazy fans trying to, trying to do anything. What have you seen? Something that you like, dang, I can't believe that happened. Man, at a lot of shows that I was at, I haven't really seen too much fans jump in. Now it's really? kind of well, more. Well, not jump in, but maybe say something, maybe do something, something oh, that might have happened that yeah. night. Oh, okay. So we was in Louisiana at one point, and uh, there's this wrestler, and he's a, uh, uh, his name is Gino Medina, real good guy. He's actually probably about to get signed too. But we was in Louisiana, and we was out there, man. And uh, that crowd started chanting Donald Trump. So that's <laughs> yeah, they they that was different. I was like, oh okay, it's like that for real out here. <laughs> so it was, you know. Wow, man, that's dope. I, I really enjoy just hearing <laughs> stories like that because those are the moments that make people love what you do. To be honest with you, those mm-hmm. intensified moments where. Dang man, this is it's a real it's entertainment. So yeah, it is. At the end of the day, it's a good thing. Any smoke is good smoke to me. Like yeah. bad, good, whatever. Just let's keep it going. But that's what I think too. But we're getting in a world now where it's everything is getting censored, and it's hard to. Mm. You exactly. know, I, mean, I don't have no problem with what you say to me. You bought that ticket if you out there, <laughs> but it's. Everybody is different. I can't tell you what to get offended for, and then I can't tell you what's too much. And you kind of got to know, you know, at the same time. But some people can get vicious with it. What misconception did you have about wrestling before you started going to the school or starting doing this when you were a child and you was watching wrestling? What misconception that you had? And then when you went in, you're like, oh, it's not like that. Okay. Mm, Misconception. I would probably say I thought that I was going to be, at the time, but wrestling has changed a lot since then. Uh, but I thought I was going to be like a real small guy in the business. And I'm not one of the smaller. I'm like a medium average size guy. But I was always thinking in my head, like, I got to work out more. Get so you bigger, thought get everybody bigger, get bigger. in there was Yeah, big. I thought everybody in it was, was a lot bigger than big. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But that that's not necessarily the case. Okay, okay. And just real quick tonight at the New Texas Pro, we're got the yeah. Where um, is it? It's the St. Jude uh, Hall mm-hmm. in Arlington. Okay, uh, twelve a.m. is when it's starting. It's called uh, Cowboy. Twelve a.m. Yeah, it was like it's the midnight, so it's after WrestleMania. So we, like I said, all these wrestling fans are wow. looking for a place to go. It's it is different. So. 
Cowboys from Hell is the Tonight Show, and you have like Brian Keith, and Brian Keith is a guy that comes from uh, Booker T's reality wrestling school as well, mm-hmm. and uh, he is actually sponsored by Swissa House. Oh, so, wow. yeah, he comes out to uh, still tipping, so that he's he's gonna be he's gonna be something. Y'all got to get a chance what to watch. What song him. you come out to? Turn down for what? Hey. Oh, all the time. That's what you all always. All the time. That's what, yeah. They call me Mr. Turn Down for what? You wow. know? I like that. That's a good song. To come What's out top to? three wrestlers of all time, dead or alive? Ooh, all time, man. Uh, Number top one. Three. Top three. Your what are we, what are we three. talking? Are we talking just top my three, top three? Your top three. This is top you, three. man. Yours. Top three that you feel that the, you love the most. That you feel and the reason good. why. Number one. Number one, I'll probably say Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels, why? Wow. His in-ring uh, ability is, is out of this world. If you know what you're doing in there and you understand – uh, what the wrestling game is, I do think that he did it the best, and he did it the best with a lot of different opponents, and he did it the best in a lot of different matches. Number two, Number two. I'll probably say Bret Hart. Bret Hart's Bret right Hart. up next there. Bret Hart was a very good technician. Comes from a wrestling family. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I think of a champion, I think of Bret Hart because he was just such a he was such a good dude, and he was such a good role model for people. Wow. Number three. Number three. And Number this can three. be any. Um, it can be a male or female. It doesn't have yeah, to be. No, male. I, I got you. I there got no you. No female out there. Come <laughs> on, <man. laughs> yes, there is. There's, they, don't, they don't work hard enough. Let's There's go. a lot of. They gotta uh, do more. They gotta do more. Man, top three. I'll probably say Booker T. Man, he, he's T. up there for me. He's became not only because he's became a good role model for me as somebody that I could talk to, but just all he did and the. I was telling somebody that he would probably never know how much he means to black kids growing up. Oh. And he knows, but I don't know if he knows how much it impacted so much black wrestlers and the, his people and getting to see him on TV and people, you know, he looked like us and he was out there doing his thing. And so mm-hmm. I just, I, and he's a great dude, great energy. Uh, right now he's doing a family thing. He's a great father, great husband. He's running his school out there and he's always looking to help out the new generation. So I'm going to put Booker T right there. Dope, That's man. Cool. Um, Thank you for coming on the show, man. Uh, shout out to Kamala. I think they say he was a he got his leg cut off. Some I don't know, but anyway, you know I'm going there with that. Y'all don't remember Kamala, but <laughs> no, people I got you, who I got real you. deep wrestling fans know who Kamala was, and yeah. So I had to say that. Good dude. Have you ever done tag team? Yeah, yeah. You I was in. A, I was in. I won the tag team belts, but I was in the tag team a couple of different ones. Brian Keith, the one I just named. I was with him at Booker's, but I love tag team wrestling. Tag team wrestling is such a different story, you could tell, and there's so much more going right. on, and, and right. people, yeah, you know, now it's the attention is a little bit more on the ref because it's more chaos, it's more people, mm-hmm. you got to keep order. It's 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 crazy. I love And they'd be sneaking team. and trying to get in and trying to do a whole bunch of stuff they shouldn't be. Yeah, you got to watch funny. out for It'd it. It'd be yeah. entertaining. Do you, do you, I mean, you being, being in wrestling and everything, you can't just go out here and whoop nobody because you'll get in trouble. Kind of say you're trained. Yeah, you're a trained fighter. With your fist. So a real person weapon. come up to you like one of my homeboys come up here and get at me and you can't even help me. No, nah, I mean, I, you know, I'll help you. You know, that's self-defense. That's, that's family defense right there. I'll help you, brother. No, I mean, yeah, I guess it's not trained in the sense of, like, MMA. Right. But most people, I would advise you not to go up to a pro wrestler and, and try to start some stuff. I would advise you not to do it. If an MMA and a uh, pro wrestler got in a who ring, wins? who would win? What ring? In a ring. You know, what, ring. What, what ring? Is it would be an MMA ring? Okay, an MMA most. fighter would win in the MMA ring, yeah. and a wrestler you feel would fight would always win in the wrestling ring. Well, what, I don't know what we and when we come in, he's he gonna up, be doing everything he do in the MMA ring. Well, you gotta look at like Brock Lesnar. You know, he's been champion in WWE and champion in the UFC. You know, there's a lot of people that go back and forth and switch. So I think it's just depending on the people. It's not necessarily depending on the. You know, because some people know more than others. I don't know if we're talking Good about a, a big person versus a small person. So I'll just keep it at that. <laughs> Let me ask you, what, what's your handle if people want to get a hold of you on, uh, on I'm Terrell Tempo on Instagram, and then I'm Tempo Terrell on Twitter. So just switch the name <laughs> switch around. Name around. I hope we did you justice on Boss Talk 101. Oh, man, it was great. Talk, man. Yeah, it was an honor, man. Yeah, no, it's, man, thank you for coming on this show, bro. Mm-hmm. Like I said, man, we've just been doing this uh, a little over a year consistently, and um we we just love having you here. Um, you were in that boss talk like no one has mm-hmm. ever worn it before. Oh, we taking some pictures. You're the pictures, first huh? one with the green on the boss Ooh, talk. Uh-huh. You're the first one. You're the nobody first wrestler else. we've had. You're the first interview. wrestler. You're the first. You like oh. Soldier Boy. You you did it first. I'm big. I did it first. Yeah. <laughs> hey Soldier, you didn't do this first. I was on boss talk and in the wrestling ring at the same time, bro. Hey, man, thank Come you. at me, Soldier. <laughs> big Draco. Hey, that's <laughs> him, man. Thank you so much. Is there anything else? Nah, that's thank it. you for coming on the show. We love. 
love you, brother. Thank you, man. And I do want to say thank you not to cut you off. And this is beautiful what y'all got going here. I see the hustle and the grind man. in it. And it's only going to get better. Thank you so much, man. Hey, man, that's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. Oh, yeah. Thanks.